How's it going guys? I'm Chris Kiefer. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about suspension clickers and how to adjust your clickers on your dirt bike. Uh, for some of you guys that asked me on my, my website, what's my suspension clickers do? How far in? How far out? We're going to try to explain those things right here and then try to give you some tuning advice when you're at the track. We can make this this video 20 minutes long, but I'm going to try to condense all of the information into, try to do it 10 minutes. So um, first things first, you got your owner's mount, you got your bike, make sure your, your suspension is at your stock clickers. If your bike is stock, obviously you're going to have revalved, resprung, all these things. But we're talking about the basics. Make sure your clicker settings are at the OEM spec because if they're not, you might have one that's 13 out, My your other fork might be at 16 out. You need to be even because that can make your suspension feel like crap on the track. Uh, another thing that I've noticed as well that you guys uh, don't seem to understand is what is clicks out? I get a lot of emails saying, what do you mean by clicks out? So if we're going in on this adjuster, um, you could go all the way in, click and click and click and until it starts to get hard. Once it gets hard, that's fully closed, you're stopped. Don't try to force it anymore because you can maybe get two to three extra clicks when it's super hard, but you're not doing anything besides hurting that needle that's going down in that fork. So for me, once it starts to get hard, that is at zero. Then you slowly back out one click, two click. That's what we're referring to as clicks out, so just know that. Um, same thing with all the way. Um, when you go all the way in, you know that's fully hard or if you're on the rebound, that is the slowest setting you can go. Um, same thing goes to your shock all the way in, all the way out. That is the same as well. Okay, so today we have my son's bike. He has a kit uh, Showa fork and a shock. So a little bit different than the production kicks, 250 KYB stuff. But nonetheless, this video um, will just explain to you what you guys need to do. Um, also, when we talk about fork height, if we can zoom in here, when we say, hey, you need to be three millimeters or five millimeters up on the fork, uh, we do not measure this cap. This is not part of the measurement. We go off just the tube height. So this fork setting is flush. As you can see, this is the cap. We're not measuring uh, the cap at all. We're just measuring the tube height. So uh, when I say two millimeters, it's just the tube height. Five millimeters, just the tube height, not the cap. We're not measuring from the top of the cap. So just know that. Uh, sag, check your sag before you get to the track. Um, get the gear on, make sure you're fully geared, have someone check it for you. So maybe if you're in a rush when you're at the track, you don't wanna do it at the track, do it at home. Get geared up in your garage, have your wife, your son, whoever, measure you on the bike and make sure you're at the recommended sag reading that the OEM manual tells you to do. So that is first and foremost. Have your sags checked, make sure your clickers are right, and then there you go, and then you can go to your track. All right, Chris, I'm at the track. My fork feels harsh. How do I know if I'm too stiff, too stiff or too soft? The important thing to remember is sometimes you guys get a harsh feeling in your fork. Kiefer, I'm uh, hitting some braking bumps or I'm hitting chop and I feel like my front end is deflecting. So two things, you could be too soft as well as you could be uh, too stiff. How do you know what you are? So there's a couple things. There's O-rings on your fork. You can see how far down your fork is compressing. That is a good rule of thumb. Or if you don't have an O-ring, you could use a zip tie. Um, that's a poor man's way of doing it. That's what I used to do growing up. Just, you know, do a zip tie around your fork. And that tells you how much travel you're actually using out on the track. Okay, so you have that. I still can't decide if I'm too stiff or too soft. Are you, when you come into a corner, are you oversteer or are you understeer? So if you're coming into a corner and you're knifing and you're just like knifing your front end, or if you're coming into a corner and then you're pushing. so. Normally, if you're getting a harsh feeling off throttle on diesel and you're knifing, that means you're too low. That means you need to go stiffer on your fork. So maybe try go one or two clicks in on your compression to see if that helps. Now, if you're coming into the corner off throttle on diesel and you're pushing and you have a harsh feeling, that could mean you're too stiff and you need to back out your compression. So one to two clicks. To note, show a KYB. Show is a very sensitive clicker setting. KYB is not so sensitive. So if you're on a KYB fork, you could probably go two clicks at a time for adjustment. On a Showa fork, one click at a time is sensitive. So just note that. Now, rebound. Faster, choppier tracks require a faster rebound. So 
if your front end feels harsh, deflection, it's bouncing around, you, may, you might think, hey, Kiefer, uh, I think it's too fast. Well, what's your track condition? Is it tall bumps? Is it small bump? Is it square edge? Is it fast? Is it slow? Normally, out here in Southern California, we have faster tracks that are square edge. So we try to speed up our rebound on the shock and our fork to make the tire follow the ground better. You back east guys, better dirt, taller bump, you're gonna have to probably go slower to keep that front end from uh, bouncing up or riding too high in your soft dirt condition. So just know that. So those are a couple good rule of rules of thumb just to try at your local track. But most notably, some of you guys don't know if you're soft or stiff. So just use that little helpful hint that I give you when you come into corners. Are you knifing? Are you understeer? You have oversteer? That'll kind of guide you on where you need to go on your fork. Now out back, it gets a little bit more sensitive. You have high speed, you have low speed, you have rebound. Now, some of you guys are scared of high speed compression. High speed compression acts like a ride height. So if you're at 105 like we are on this Kawasaki and you still feel a little ass in low when you're accelerating out of corners, you could actually stiffen up your high speed to raise that rear up without adjusting your sag if you like your sag reading. So high speed is there to adjust your basically ride height and uh, figure out where you're at on the track. If you're really just bottoming into faces of jumps or G outs and you feel really low, high speed will help those areas on the track. So you can go in eighth to quarter turn increments. We have the 14 T handle right here. We basically come in, you can start straight. If you can back this up, Aiden, see where we're at right here on this T handle, basically quarter turn increments. That's going in, that's gonna stiffen it up and that's gonna raise your rear end up. Now, we're gonna go back to stock where we were. Now, hey, I wanna soften this up, maybe lower my uh, rear end a little bit to get a little bit more traction out of a corner. Quarter turn, boom. That's basically what you wanna do. Quarter turn increments on high-speed compression really does make a difference. I've gone as much as a half turn in or out to try to adjust on my ride height on the track. So those are sensitive adjustments as well. Now. Low speed compression, where is that going to affect you on the track? So you feel a little bit soft. Maybe you want to have a little bit more rear wheel traction as you exit the corner or you're kicking from side to side. That will be your low speed compression. You can adjust that out or in. For me, basically in Southern California on tracks, I try to tend to uh, raise my rear end up a little bit on high speed, soften my low speed a little bit to get some more compliance on that square edge and then open that rebound up a little bit. East Coast guys, I tend to close things off a little bit more. Again, taller, softer bumps. You wanna slow things down, maybe um, stiffen that compression up a little bit so you're not uh, letting that dirt grab your motorcycle because East Coast dirt, soft dirt conditions, sand, uh, most of that will try to grab you and try to hold you into that dirt. So you wanna basically get a little bit stiffer uh, compression to try to drive you through that stuff. Now. If you guys are on pure sand tracks, it's a little bit different. Uh, you want to go to a little bit of a stiffer compression setting and then back your rebound, rebound out a little bit to try to make that bike move a little bit more in the sand. That's basically a good rule of thumb that we do in the testing world and production. So big sand rollers, stiffen your compression up and then back the rebound out a little bit and that'll help you. Um, just, it's basically, a, it's fine tuning your bike. It's not a Huge deal, I know it sometimes it gets complicated, but for me, out on the track, I try to do small increments. Uh, a wise guy told me, you're only as good as what you try. If you never try anything, you're never gonna know if it's good or bad. So don't be scared. Even if you think you're happy with your, with your setting, play around with it. Do a couple clicks here and there, see if it helps, gets worse, so you kinda know where you're at uh, on your bike. And uh, don't forget, as a SAG reading, there's a recommended SAG reading on your OEM manual. That's what the production test riders recommend. Um, obviously, it matters if you're heavier or lighter. There's a stock spring rate. So again, if you have any questions, Chris at KieferInkTesting.com. We can elaborate more on this, but I just wanted to make a quick hit video so you guys know which way to go when you're out on the track. There is a more detailed explanation of all of this stuff that we talk about here on this video. You can go to my website and you can read about it and it breaks it all down. But basically, compression, rebound, it's all there for you to uh, adjust and get more comfortable with your bike. 
Again, every track is different, so you may have to adjust from track to track. If you guys are riding on the weekends, you go to two different tracks on the weekends, write your settings down. Have a little manual, have a book. Say, hey, this track has this setting, this track has this setting, and then adjust that to each track you have. Again, faster type of tracks, you might wanna drop your fork height, that will help you as well. Tighter tracks, you can raise that fork height up and it gets you more front end traction. Um, we'll break all of that stuff down more in the article over on my website, but at least now you know have an, you have a little bit of an idea of where to go on your bike, and it's basically, uh, it's just trial and error. That's how I learned back in the day, and uh, I'm sure that's how you guys learn out there. So any questions, hit me up on my email. We're happy to help.